It is believed that the most seen photo is this Windows XP background. And I'm convinced that the most viewed shape is the mouse cursor. In 1968, Douglas Engelbert demonstrated a groundbreaking approach to computing in what is now called the mother of all demos. The graphical user interface as we know it now was basically invented here, as was the mouse. We have a pointing device called a mouse, a standard keyboard and a special key set we have here. Other tracking devices had been invented, but the blurry vertical arrow on that screen was the first mouse cursor. It could change into a cross to indicate an action. I don't know why we call it a mouse. Sometimes I apologize. It started that way and we never did change it. The system had a vector-based interface, so the cursor was probably not a real pixel image. Likely in reaction to that demo, at Xerox Park they took it to a whole new level. Their system had adopted almost all ideas of Engelbert, including the mouse. By doing no more than operating this unique pointing device, which we call the mouse. And the mouse pointer, or cursor, was a tilted arrow. Black, with no outline. Why this shape? I couldn't find any documentation and I could not get in touch with the original creators. Rumor has it that it was chosen because it had the best visibility. And when you point at something with your right hand, it's at the same angle. And of course they had to deal with the strong limitations of a pixel grid. Sadly I cannot confirm that these are the real reasons. In the following product star, a vertical arrow can be seen. But after that, the tilting arrow was back. And Lettish, Iroquois and Klingon in the language group area. The CEOs at Xerox did not realize what the team had built. At Team Xerox. Steve Jobs from Apple did. Which was the graphical user interface. I thought it was the best thing I had ever seen in my life. Okay, Xerox adopted ideas from Engelbert and Apple from Xerox. Apple improved it and made it more affordable. And Bill Gates from Microsoft, the company hired to write software for Apple, also saw the potential. The way it uses graphics and the speed. Many developers from Xerox moved to either Apple or Microsoft. And now, the history of the mouse cursor. From the two biggest players, to keep it simple. The Apple Lisa had a stretched cursor in color mode, but let's move to 1984. The successful Macintosh. Unsurprisingly, the mouse cursor looked very similar to the one on the Xerox system. It had a bigger head and shorter tail, and now with a white outline, making it visible on a white and a black background. The next year, Microsoft released Windows. It also adopted the tilted arrow. But now it was inverted, white with a black outline. Compared to the Apple cursor, it was bigger with a longer tail. From Windows 1 to 3.1, the cursor did not change. Look at the redundant pixel here. I am not very impressed by this drawing. Apparently it was only removed in the workstation edition of Windows 3.1. In Windows 95 and later 98, the shape was refined. Two pixels shorter and now sharp with a pixel on the tip. Moving to Windows ME in 2000, closely followed by Windows XP, the cursor grew again, being 3 pixels taller and 1 pixel wider. And for the first time, there was a hardware rendered shadow, adding some flair and visibility. Meanwhile at Apple, Steve Jobs had gone and come back. The cursor had never changed a single pixel for 22 years. But with Mac OS Tiger in 2005, the cursor improved. It got a sharp tip and the tail pixel was removed. And on top of that, it had anti-aliasing and a shadow. Other than that, the shape and size of the cursor remained the same. Anti-aliasing might look strange, but at its actual size, 
it makes the lines smoother. In 2006, Microsoft launched Windows Vista, and its cursor was changed quite much. The arrowhead increased by another pixel, while at the sides of the head, the tip pixels were removed, giving it a slightly rounded appearance. The tail was much shorter. And they made it anti-aliased and added a subtle gradient. This was already possible in Windows XP at least at some point, but only now it was actually done. On a closer inspection, the outline is bluish. But even stranger, the outline is not opaque and the transparency differs. Why is this? Was it on purpose? To compensate for the shadow? I don't know. Windows 7 had the same cursor. Back to Apple. In 2012, Apple introduced its first computer with a high density display. Yes, it is a retina display. One pixel was now four pixels. It required new drawings of the cursor. The shape of the cursor was no longer bound to visible pixels. But the shape of the Apple cursor did not change and probably never will again. Maybe they'll remove the shadow at some point. Around the same time Windows 8 was introduced and in 2015 Windows 10. The shape remained the same and the outline still had transparency. But the gradient was removed and the shadow was turned off by default. Which brings us to the point where I decided to design my own cursor. I've done that before in the late 90s for fun. But this time I was simply annoyed. I used Windows for work and a while back got my first high density 4K display, meaning a scaled interface. For this, Windows cursor files contain several sizes. And the problem with the scaled Windows cursor is that the outline remains one pixel, visually half the thickness. It doesn't rhyme and makes the cursor hard to see on a light background. And the shape is just off. In my opinion, a terrible design. Also, the hand and other cursors suffer from similar problems. So I changed those too. More on that later. First, how do you change the cursor at all in Windows 10? Well, that's something I had to figure out too. I typed cursor to end up in an outrageously spaced tablet style environment with text cursor options. Be sure to resize the window if there is no menu on the left. I clicked on mouse. Once there, I could only change the mouse cursor size or make it black or negative. Then something incredible happened. Closely watch the cursor. Yes, you see that right? The cursor is replaced with an aliased 2-bit version. But changing it back is even more spectacular. Apparently, the designers of the tablet environment were not aware of the existence of the Windows default cursor and the ability to change it. Luckily, I am. So I closed the window and typed mouse in Dutch to see if I got something else. I did. Again, I got mouse options, but all different. So there are two mouse option windows with the same name. Anyway, depending on the size of the window, either below in large text or on the right in small text is an unnecessary title with a link below extra mouse options. Jumping out of the tablet style environment in a window that for some reason always appears on the left top, I could finally change back to the window's default cursor. <sighs> Sorry. The easiest way is type themes and then click mouse cursor. Oh, Microsoft, what are you doing? When I started to design my high DPI cursor, I tried a different angle of the arrow. But this seemed impossible to get used to. Basically, any other shape was super weird. So I quickly decided that only people who haven't worked with a mouse before could maybe prefer a different shape as they haven't seen a cursor before. So the tilted arrow, it was. 
I made the arrowhead even bigger in proportion and the tail shorter and slightly wider. To make it look even more modern, I rounded the tail end, something that's not really visible at the 100% scale. The design is vector based, so no pixels, but drawn by previewing the pixels in the high DPI scale. And the final result was done by redrawing pixels, making it pixel perfect. I then used the same vector for the other supported sizes. I hope that you agree that the 100% size also looks better than the Windows default. I also made one in black and it looks like that I actually prefer to work with the black cursor. Time will tell. Then the hand cursor. The iconic hand was first seen in Mac Paint. Later a pointing hand was introduced in HyperCard. You use cards that contain graphics and text and buttons. That idea was adopted for the internet and became the unofficial standard, just like the arrow. This Windows 10 hand just looks wrong. My hand design actually started as a drawing on paper, then made the vector drawing and aligned it to pixels. I didn't even consider a different shape because this would only cause confusion. And of course the waiting icon, or throbber. That too was an inspirationless low frame rate blue circle, much less fancy than the Windows 7 one. Almost every waiting or activity icon these days is something spinning around. Perhaps because a timepiece may emphasize the waiting too much. And a complex shape is not in fashion. I'd like to reintroduce the hourglass, first seen on the Xerox system. I tried monochrome like the other cursors, but that was boring. So I did the opposite and used all colors of the rainbow instead. This way it was still color neutral, but not boring. Now it was an abstract magical hourglass or something to look at while waiting, I hope. But while designing that, I suddenly realized Apple had done that already. And then found out that this beach ball was actually designed in next step all the way back in 1990. Wow. Originally it resembled a spinning magneto optical disc. Apple did not steal it as Next was acquired by Apple in 1997, including Steve Jobs. I also changed the iBeam or text selection cursor. The Windows 10 high DPI version looks like blown up pixels. Apart from designing and trying different sizes, I found out that by using black and white instead of the usual negative, the visibility improved. And the last cursor I'll mention is Move. The Windows version looks a bit like a medieval cross. I made it look more dimensional, since nowadays it's often used to change a view rather than move a window. I'll spare you the details of the rest, but I've also changed all other supported Windows cursors. I say supported because some internet cursors are not supported in Windows 10. Like the magnifying glass, which is used quite often on websites. In these cases you are bound to the cursors included in the software. If you want to see the Windows 1 cursor from 1985, at the moment this is still possible as both Chrome and Firefox in Windows use this design for copy and alias. My design and animations were done in Photoshop and the cursor files were made in Real World Cursor Editor. Making this video was unplanned and actually took more time than making the cursors. So I really hope you enjoyed it. It gets more than 20 views and of course that you also prefer my cursor design. The links to my cursors are in the video description. I had the cursors embedded in theme files, but because of an ancient Windows bug, the cursors are gone after a restart. But I managed to make some installer scripts. And that wraps it up. Douglas, take it away. And I thank all the rest of you very much for coming to the dedication ceremonies. <laughs>